Hey guys, it's Joy here. Today we're just going to do a quick uh, video on what you need to know about duplicates with Google My Business. Um, first, I'm going to talk about why these types of listings are still problematic and why you should care about them. Um, and then we're going to dive into just the different scenarios. So first would be if you own a storefront business. Um, second would be if you have a service area business. And then third would be if you are in a business that has practitioner or professional listings and what you need to do about them. So I'll start first by just explaining why you need to care about duplicate listings. Um, when I started in this industry over a decade ago, um, it was kind of a common knowledge that duplicate listings were ranking killers and they were a huge deal. And if you had them, um, you know, it's going to really negatively impact your rankings. So um, today, uh, more than 10 years later, that, that's definitely not true. Um, they are not, you know, this huge thing that's going to kill your ranking if you have them, but they are still problematic because of what happened with the Possum algorithm update. Um, I'm not gonna get into too many details about that update, but if you wanna read about it, I have a link to the article I wrote. And what Possum essentially did, or why um, you need to know about this, is if you have, let's say, five listings um, that are for the same business, but you know they're either practitioner listings or they're just duplicates that have come up, um, Google has a filtering process where they essentially will filter out um, the majority of the listings and only show maybe one or two. Um, and by having multiple listings and not even being aware of it, you are basically leaving it in Google's hands of which one to show. And it may not rank as high if it doesn't have all the right factors. So definitely important to know what listings are out there and make sure that you deal with them accordingly. Um, so first would be a scenario where you have a storefront business. So business actually has an office. They actually see customers at their location. Um, you know, this would be like a McDonald's or... Um, a typical like insurance office, um, you know, where they have clients come in and stuff. So if you're in that boat, um, the first question would be, you know, are the addresses in the two listings the same? Um, if they are the same, Google generally will merge the two listings. Um, if they're not the same, Google generally will move the older listing to the new one if your business has moved, for example. Um, and I get into more details in the article what the difference is between a merge and a move, so you can read that there. Um, but it's usually pretty straightforward for storefronts, and um, Google usually will merge the listings without any issues. Um, the big thing to keep in mind is that you do have to have control um, of the both listings in order to get anywhere. So in case you're not sure if the listing is already verified or not, you can see that here. Um, on the listing, you'll see if there is an own this business icon, that means the listing is not owner verified, um, and that's good. But if you see um, in the other case, uh, you know, something like this, where there's no own this business icon, this means the listing is verified. And if you're not the one that owns it, you need to get access to it before you can do anything. So in this, this example here, um, this is kind of a, a use case of where, um, you know, a duplicate listing might be problematic. So you've got, you know, the search for plastic surgeon, and you have this listing for Dr. Vitolo. And I'm sure there's nothing wrong with Dr. Vitolo, but um, you'll notice the address here. And there is another listing for a different um, doctor also at that address. And maybe the practice wants this one to show up because look at all the reviews. And it's, you know, it's a lot better, nicer looking listing. Um, unfortunately, Google is, again, choosing the one that it wants and ranking the other one instead. So that's where um, you know, we find that it's, it's important to, to deal with the duplicate listings. Um, if you have a service area business, the, the approach is a little different. So um, with service area businesses, we usually find that they are residential addresses. Not always, but a lot of times people work out of their homes. And, you know, you'll find this is like the case with the average plumber, electrician, etc. cetera. Um, the key thing to keep in mind here is that when it comes to home-based businesses, this is the one type of um, listing that Google will pretty much always remove um, because homes are not allowed on Google Maps unless they are verified through Google My Business. So in this example here, let's say I was this plumber and you'll see this is an unverified listing and it's pretty clear by street view that this is a home address. This is a listing that um, you could get removed. You can remove it yourself actually through suggested edit. Um, but also if you report it to Google, they will likely remove it as well. So if you face this issue where you've got duplicate listings in your service area business, a lot of the times Google will just remove one. Um, again, you have to have control over both of them or um, at least one can't be owned by someone else. So I'll give you a quick trick here to show you how you would actually go through a suggest and edit, like I mentioned in my article. I have this handy little plugin in uh, Chrome called the Get Five Stars um, link generator. Really awesome. If you don't have it, you should totally add it. And this will take me straight to um, Google Maps, which you have to see in Google Maps. 
um, in order to see the proper options. You won't see these options in search. But if I was to wanting, um, if I was wanting to remove this listing, essentially I can go in here and through suggest and edit, um, it'll come up with a few different options. Um, when I toggle this place is permanently closed, there'll be a few options here. So private place or home would be, you know, the one that you'd want to select in this case. Um, but there's other ones here. I'm not going to get into all the different use cases of those, but um, they do do different things. Um, so it's important to make sure you select the right one. Um, Finally, getting into practitioner listings. So these are probably the ones I see the most where people are like wanting to get rid of practitioner listings or remove them. Um, Google will not remove a listing for practitioner, generally speaking, if the practitioner is um, still working somewhere. Um, and in a lot of cases, we see um, businesses that want to remove a practitioner listing because the person no longer works for them. Um, Google has changed their stance many times on what to do with these. The current um, Thing that is suggested is that you need to get the listing updated. So if you've got, you know, Bob who used to work for you and now he works for someone else, unfortunately, as far as Google's concerned, Bob is the true owner of that listing, not you as the business owner. So your course of action would be to get the listing updated. If you don't have control over the listing, then you need to contact Google My Business Support and provide them sufficient evidence that that person does not work for you anymore and um, that they work somewhere else and get them to update the listing. But the unfortunate news is that, you know, their reviews and, and data um, are not yours. They are that professional. Um, there's lots of other scenarios, too, that I, I'm not going to get into um, for the sake of time. But, um, you know, cases where what if a practitioner has um, retired or what if they've, you know, what if they're deceased, which I've run into a few times. Um, in those cases, I, I do get into detail into them um, in my guide, the Experts Guide to Will Palacio. So if you haven't heard of that, um, it is a 260, uh, I think a little more than 260 page guide, um, all about everything you need to know with Will Palacio and Google My Business. Um, I spend usually four to six hours a month updating it. Um, and you can buy it, it's for sale locally, but there's a link in the article. Um, but if you wanna know just kind of like the type of content that's in it and not really sure you wanna pay for it, yeah, I do have a option at the bottom of the article to download a sample so you can see um, what type of information is there in there and hopefully you'll, you'll kind of get the value out of it. Um, but I do have 22 pages in there on duplicate listings. There's a lot of stuff that um, I've seen come up in different scenarios. Um, but if you have any specifics that you'd like answers to, also please feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to advise you on um, what the best course of action would be. Thanks for listening.